What is up, everybody? It is your boy Nick Noodles coming at you with another great video. We're all tired of taking L's on the sneakers app, and at the end of the day, it all just comes down to luck. So without further ado, I'm going to mathematically and statistically show you um, your odds of copying on the sneakers app, as well as go over how many L's it might take you before you actually get a W on the sneakers app. These numbers might surprise you, and I'm going to try to explain this and dumb it down as best as I can. Now, I'm not a statistics expert. I didn't study it in college. However, I did get an A- in the one stats class I had to take for my engineering degree. So I think I have a little bit of knowledge on this, but again, I'm not an expert. I'm going to link all the resources that I use down in the description. And without further ado, let's go ahead and look at some of these spreadsheets and documents that I've used to formulate my equations. So first off, let's just look at the raw, you know, stock numbers that you can expect on a release and how that affects the number of pairs per size. So right here in this upper left hand corner, don't worry about everything else. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Let's just look at stock numbers. So um, given a general release, usually the sneakers app has around 200,000 to 300,000 pairs. Now, I would take that number with a grain of salt. I think that that number is actually lower because when we usually get these stock numbers, they're accounting for all different platforms and not just the sneakers app. So for this example, let's take 200,000 pairs. We're going to do a size run of 7 to 18. Um, and so total, that is 23 pairs if you include all the half sizes. And um, that pretty much equates to 8,600 pairs per size. Now, again, that's a rough estimate because some sizes may be limited than others and more people might be going for the more limited sizes, which can also affect probability. But this is just to give you a general idea. Now, on a more hype release, like an Off-White, a Travis Scott, a Nike SB Dunk, the stock is going to be significantly lower, probably around 10,000 to 50,000. Um, so if we look at that, 50,000 pairs, we'll change the size run to a size 15 because I haven't seen any size 18 dunks. And right off the bat, we can see that changing those numbers, we get 2,900 stock per size. Um, and then lastly, let's just do a very large DR, like 1 million pairs. And as you can see, there's a pretty drastic jump when there's a lot more stock. You have 43,000 pairs per size. But keep in mind, there's probably millions of people going for any given release at any given time because the sneakers app is just so easy to use and set up. You don't have to worry about captchas and you don't have to worry about speed uh, because for the most part, all sneakers drops are raffle based. You can look up online what a Leo is and what a Dan or a draw is on the sneakers app. Um, the only time that the sneakers app is first come first serve and speed matters is on an exclusive access or early access drop. That's just looking at raw stock numbers per size. Now I want to break down the probability of actually copying on the sneakers app. So right here I have a long um, Google Doc and we're going to try to just break this down. I'm going to try to explain it as simply as possible. Now I got most of this information derived from this math stack exchange post. Now this isn't like the holy grail of math information, but I think that this guy's answer is pretty credible. And this post has to deal with the probability of winning a prize in a raffle. So I think it's pretty applicable. I will link it in the description. But the main thing from this equation and from this forum post is the binomial coefficient formula. And really, you don't even have to understand how this formula works. The only thing you really have to understand are the variables that are involved. So in this case, N is going to represent any given number of entries. So if 10,000 people enter a sneakers release, then for this equation, N equals 10,000. And K is going to represent the number of winners on the sneakers app. So this is pretty much however much stock is available in that size. And that's going to vary from drop to drop. So in order to get the probability, we're going to be doing two different binomial coefficient equations that are outlined here. We're going to divide them by each other and then subtract them by one. I don't want to get into too much detail on how this makes sense or how this works because one, I'm not that great at explaining it. Um, so if you want to learn more about it, definitely look at this forum post instead or, you know, look up basic statistics tutorials on YouTube. Shout out Khan Academy. So let's go ahead and just look at an example here. I've typed one out. Um, there's a sneaker release you're going for. There are 100 entries, 10 sneakers available. Um, you can't win more than once. You can use multiple accounts, but you'll see later in this video, um, it doesn't really change it that much. So for the simplicity of this example, we're just going to assume that you enter one account. So 
first value we need is the top binomial coefficient value here in the numerator. And for this, we're just going to use n equals 100 minus the number of counts that you enter. The 100 comes from the total number of entries and the accounts entered is just one. That's what we're assuming. Again, we'll calculate what happens if you enter like five or 100 um, in a few minutes. So for this example, n equals 99, k equals 10. Now you can calculate this by hand, but that would literally take you forever. Um, if you don't know what a factorial is, I recommend looking into that as well. But this is a pretty math intensive operation and you'll see why that causes problems in a little bit. So for this example, n equals 99, k equals 10. So we have a big ass number here that's like 15 trillion that I've already typed out right here. The second binomial coefficient, um, we're not going to subtract the number of counts that we entered in and we're just going to use n equals 100. And we're also just going to use the same k value, which represents the number of sneakers available. So if we punch this into the calculator, we get 110 and we get 17 trillion. So um, if we plug both those numbers into our equation, we get a 10% chance of winning on this release. Now I've gone ahead and put this formula into another spreadsheet right here. Um, so from this ex same example, we were doing 110 and one. Um, so we have a 10% chance of winning, 0.1 is 10%. So let's go ahead and change that to five sneakers accounts. Let's say you get your whole family to join. So if there's five accounts, you go from a 10% chance to a 40% chance. Now you might think that's pretty good odds, but at the end of the day, this is a pretty low number. Um, it's very hard to do the exact numbers uh, with this formula, and that's one of the limits of it. Because if you look at this factorial value right here, this is a very math intensive thing. And as you can see here, we just used 110, and we were getting values in the trillions. Um, so Sheets is not a big fan of that. If I try to type something over like 2,000, I get an error right here because it has to be in between zero and 1029. So let's do the most that we can, 1029. And let's say there's one pair available. This is actually pretty realistic, I think, when you um, do the ratios. So if you enter in one account, you have a 0.0009% chance of winning. Now let's say you get your whole family to join. That goes up to a 0.004% chance of winning. So it really doesn't help you all that much, but I guess it could. That pretty much breaks down my formula for probability now. You have to take this with a grain of salt because it's very difficult to actually calculate this. We're doing a lot of assumptions. And for that reason, when we look at expected value, we're just gonna have to play around with the probability. Um, we don't know how many people are gonna enter a release every single time. And we don't know how many shoes are gonna be available in each size every single time. So that alone makes it just too variable and it's very difficult to um, calculate that. Maybe some PhD student has it all figured out, but definitely not me. All right, so the last part of this video, I wanna talk about expected value how many times it might take you before you take a W on the sneakers app. And to do this, we're going to use what is known as the geometric distribution. And it has all these requirements that are outlined here. I'm going to blaze right through them so that I don't bore you. But the first one is that there are one or more Bernoulli trials. Um, a Bernoulli trial pretty much just means that there are only two outcomes in each trial. And in this case, the outcomes are you either got the sneakers or you took an L on the sneakers. The second requirement is that the number of trials could go on forever. And, you know, that's pretty sad to think about. You could go your entire life without winning a sneakers release, but there are better things in life. And although that is a sad truth, um, you shouldn't let it worry you. The third requirement is that the success and the probability of failure are the same for each trial. Some people might argue that this is false and that the more L's you take, the better chance you have of taking another W but um, that hasn't been scientifically proven. If someone can show me the backend code of the sneakers app, boosting your chances of winning after every single release, then I'll believe you, but that hasn't come out and it's never gonna come out because in reality, your odds are pretty much the same every single time. The last requirement kind of builds off that and it's just worded a little bit differently, but independent trials right here, pretty much means that each trial does not depend on another one. So again, if you take an L on the first release that you go for, um, it doesn't affect your ability to take a W or L on the second release. So because this meets the geometric distribution requirements, we can use this very simple formula right here to calculate 
um, the probability of succeeding after a certain number of trials. So um, this is kind of a funky formula, but the main thing you need to look out for is this small p right here and here is just the probability of success. We're gonna play around with that value. X, um, the little one, represents um, the trial that we're on. So if we were on the 10th time trying to get a W, we would use 10 for this value right here. And then this notation right here, P big X equals X, this is just the notation you use to show probability as a function. It's the same thing as F of X when you're like doing algebra or whatever. Um, so let's just go ahead and play around with these values. So if you have a 99% chance of copying, then in theory, it shouldn't take you more than one time to cop uh, because to take an L, that would be a 1% chance. And so this um, chart right here is pretty much calculating your probability of success on each trial. Um, and the reason why it looks like this is because um, the probability of you losing on the first trial and succeeding on the second one is incredibly low because your success on the first one is so high. And if you look at this, you know, it's calculating zero for like the 100th attempt because if you had a 99% chance of winning and it took you 100 times to win, that would be like the worst luck ever. Um, so let's look at something more realistic. Uh, I personally think for a super hype release, like an off-white or something, you have a 1% chance to cop if you're using one account. So if we look at that, um, you're expected to take 100 attempts, and that's just calculated by dividing one over the probability. So one over 0.01 is 100 times. So that would take you 100 attempts until you got a super hype shoe. And as you can see, um, this line is pretty much flat, which pretty much shows that your probability is the same every single time you enter a sneakers release. It's a little bit sad, um, but that is just the harsh reality of statistics and luck. Now, if we go down here, we can look at the number of hype drops a year and the number of years it will take you to win. So if there were 10 super hype drops this year and your expected number of attempts until success was 100, it would take you 10 years to take a W now. Let's say that number is more like 25. I feel like there was a lot of hype releases this year all across the board. Then it would still take you four years. Um, now, let's say your odds were a little bit better. Um, let's say it's point. Let's say you have a 10% chance, which, you know, might be cap. It might not. Um, then you should, in theory, you should have taken at least one W this year on a hype release. Obviously, the less you go for, the more that's going to take. So if you only go for 10, it's going to take you a full year. If you only go for five, it's going to take you two years. Now let's look at what I think is the highest probability you have based on just the sheer amount of people entering all these sneakers at every single release. I think it's in the million. So at the absolute best, I think you have a 25% chance of winning so that would take you four attempts and so um, again you would have about you would have a few wins under your belt let's look at something less than one percent which i think is very very possible so let's say something takes 0 0.001 percent that's a tenth of one percent um, it would take you a thousand tries to take a w on the sneakers app and again you get a super flat line because your odds are going to be pretty much the same every single time. Um, if there are 25 hype drops a year, then it would take you 40 years to win. So I hope you all enjoyed that video. I kind of rambled on a lot. I couldn't really give you a concrete probability value of um, what it takes to win on the sneakers app or how long you could expect to win. Uh, but hopefully these numbers that I've showed kind of put, put it in perspective of your actual chances of copying on the sneakers app. In short, it's very, very hard. And if you took a massive W this year, I wouldn't expect another one for at least another year or two, depending on how many you go for. I hope I didn't bore you to death with this video and I hope you guys enjoy it.